Let's break down day two of Chicago Bears mini camp. What is going on, y'all? Fast Sports all back at it with another video talk. Of course, man, I felt here to talk about the Chicago Bears. So if you're a Bears fan, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Please make sure you are following me on all my social media platforms, guys. As always, bell, bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. All right. So as I've told you guys, I'm going to be trying to give you guys these daily updates on mandatory mini camps, which started yesterday. So we are now on day two. And just a couple of quick notes and takeaways that I've gotten from day two from reading all of the different reports from the beat writers and seeing the notes, etc. All right. So first things first, talking about the offense again. I think it was still a bit shaky today. Some things uh, that were good, some things that were bad. It was a mixed bag here because Justin Fields had a deep ball to DJ Moore and their chemistry continues to build and you love to see it. And I've seen multiple beat writers talk about the fact that DJ Moore has been the most impressive player so far through OTAs and, and two days of mandatory minicamp. He's just so smooth. He's just so agile. He's just such a uh, great, phenomenal player. And we, we know that, but hearing it and seeing it, different feeling, of course, and different thing. And so Fields had a deep pass to, to DJ Moore and their connection continues to grow, but he also had an interception. Jaquan Brister picked him off in 11 on 11s and it was not just an interception it was a pick six so again good and bad but also good in the sense of the defense isn't looking good we know Jaquan Brister is an absolute stud and so the fact that he was able to get an interception bodes well for this defense and you know that we've got some ball hawks here that we really didn't have last year so overall to me um, you know I'm not going to be too down from hearing about the offense struggling but I'm not going to be too up from hearing about the offense you know, doing well, it's just going to be somewhere in between. I'm going to try to stay even keel here. But yeah, you love to see the fact that Justin Fields is going to take shots in practice, which he absolutely should. And more importantly, he's going to give his guys chances, right? It's one of those things where it's like, hey, if it's a 50-50 ball, I'm going to give my guy a chance to go ahead and catch it versus a quarterback who will never throw it unless the guy's wide open. Like, I don't want that. I don't want Fields to be that quarterback where it's like, Oh, I'm worried about the interception. I'm not going to throw it unless he's absolutely open. No, go ahead and throw it up there if you feel like your guy can make a play and it's a 50-50 chance. Obviously, you don't want to make bad decisions, but you can certainly go ahead and do that. So offense continues to be a mixed bag here. Let's talk about uh, a couple of things on defense. Again, we talked about Jaquan Brisker uh, getting the interception, and he's an absolute stud. But Noah Sewell. So the uh, linebacker we drafted this year, brother of Panay Sewell, he continues to get a good amount of work um, for Jack Sandberg. So Jack Sandberg wasn't there, I believe, at mandatory minicamp. So they have put in Noah Sewell there. And I think he's a guy who was going to get some playing time uh, in, in, in his rookie season. I think he's going to see the field, not maybe not a lot because we have a deep linebacker core, but I think he is going to be a rotational player. Um, so hopefully he does well for us. Um, talking about special teams here, Velas Jones, Tyler Scott, and Dante Pettis, all three of them got reps in punt return. So to me, that's interesting because look, Velas Jones Jr. could be on the outside looking in for a roster spot. The receiver room is pretty stacked, right? We've already got DJ Moore, uh, Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, who are locked in starters. Then you've got Tyler Scott, who the Bears just drafted this year. That's four receivers. You got Dante Pettis, five. And you got Velas Jones Jr. six, Equinemius St. Brown seven. Like Velas Jones Jr. could be on the bubble fighting for a roster spot. So his best attribute could be to be a punt returner and be able to contribute on special teams in order to lock down a roster spot. But he's got competition with Tyler Scott and with Dante Pettis. So I think we'll kind of see these three guys go at it to see who actually ends up locking down that spot. A couple other things here. Robert Tunyon and Cole Komet both look good. And it made some nice catches today. And I, I'm telling you, I think like this offense has so many more weapons than last year. It, it's ridiculous. Like Rob Tunyon would be a starting tight end for a lot of teams. He's our backup. He's our backup, guys. So it's not just DJ Moore. He's, it's not like DJ Moore is the only guy we added. We got Robert Tunyon. Cole Komet, another year getting better. Like we have some weapons. So I'm excited. That's pretty much it. Kind of what I got from minicamp day two. I'm going to keep you guys updated, so stay tuned and locked. And please hit that big red subscribe button. That is the best way to support the channel. I will catch you guys on the other side. As always, thanks for watching.